Have you heard that foods high in oxalates are toxic and a poor choice for your health? Or maybe you've heard that they cause kidney stones, joint pain, and gut issues. Or that they block your body from absorbing nutrients, leaching valuable minerals. These claims sound really scary, so much so that you may be avoiding high oxalate foods like tea or chocolate or leafy greens. But did you know that our bodies also make oxalates and most of the time can regulate how much we absorb from foods? So let's dive into what the science actually says. That way you can make an informed choice about these foods and hopefully get back to enjoying chocolate without the fear or guilt. First, what? are oxalates. Oxalates are the salts of oxalic acid and a mineral like calcium that form insoluble crystalline structures. And when we have too high concentrations of calcium oxalate in the urine, a condition called hyperoxaluria, calcium oxalate crystals can form in the kidneys and grow into kidney stones. There are different types of kidney stones, but calcium oxalate kidney stones are the most common, accounting for about 80% of cases. Generally, the symptoms of hyperoxaluria are those of kidney stones including sharp pain in the back, side, lower stomach area, or groin, urine that looks pink, red, or brown due to blood, frequent urge to pee or pain while urinating, or not being able to urinate or only going a small amount, plus fever and chills, upset stomach, and vomiting. Now, in rare cases, primary hyperoxaluria can present as calcium oxalate microcrystalline associated arthritis, in which case joint pain would be a symptom before a kidney stone develops. And calcium oxalate microcrystalline associated arthritis is seen in late stage renal failure. Dietary oxalates do not cause joint pain or gut issues more broadly and claims that they do that you might find on the internet are just not supported by science. Oxalates are also often blamed for kidney stones. Now this is more nuanced, so let's get into the science. Studies show inconsistent effects of dietary oxalates on urinary oxalates. Most notably, high oxalate foods do not increase urinary oxalates in a dose-dependent manner, meaning it's not proportional. The amount of oxalates in a food doesn't always predict how much oxalate is going to be in our urine after that food is eaten. For example, almonds and black beans are both high in oxalates, but clinical trials using these foods shows that we absorb more of the oxalates from almonds than we do from black beans. One study found that among high oxalate foods, only eight actually increased how much oxalate was excreted in our urine. And some high oxalate foods like green tea actually decrease the risk of us developing calcium oxalate kidney stones most likely attributable to all of the benefits of the antioxidants in green tea. Under normal circumstances, the body has mechanisms to maintain oxalate homeostasis, regardless of how much oxalates we ingest. And in fact, most of the oxalates in our urine are, are the ones our bodies make. Oxalate precursors include the amino acid glycine and vitamin C which is why a couple of studies have shown high dose vitamin C supplementation can increase kidney stone risk, at least in men. This is all summed up very well by this 2008 study, which concluded the impact of dietary oxalate on urinary oxalate appears to be small. For many stone formers, restricting dietary oxalate may be a relatively ineffective intervention to reduce urinary oxalate excretion. That reminds me of a joke. Why was the green tea embarrassed? Because it couldn't chai away from the spotlight. I hope that mom joke earned your subscribe. Oxalates are considered anti-nutrients because they are naturally found in foods as a salt complexes with minerals like calcium oxalate, which does hinder the absorption in our gastrointestinal tracts of the minerals that are bound in that complex. For example, a 1989 study measured the amount of calcium absorbed in healthy women from both milk and calcium oxalate. The study showed that while 39% of the calcium was absorbed from milk, 
only 14% of it was absorbed from calcium oxalate. But reducing nutrient absorption is a far cry from blocking it completely or leaching it from our bodies, which just isn't the case. And fascinatingly, how much calcium we consume has a direct impact on how much oxalate we absorb. For example, if you only get 800 milligrams of calcium per day, you can absorb up to 20% of the oxalate from your foods. But at 1200 milligrams of calcium per day, the average oxalate absorption is just 2.6% a great argument for Nutribor, getting all of the nutrients our bodies need from the foods we eat, including calcium. In addition, our gut bacteria do metabolize oxalates for us, making a large proportion of the calcium oxalic acid is bound to bioavailable to us while reducing oxalate absorption. In fact, research shows that people with oxalate degrading bacteria living in their gut microbiomes have far lower risk of developing calcium oxalate kidney stones, even on high oxalate diets. In the gut, the bacteria Oxalobacter formigenes, as well as some strains of Lactobacillus and Bifidobacterium, the, the most famous probiotics, degrade oxalate from the foods we eat, which helps to regulate how much oxalate makes it into our systems. And on top of reducing absorption, Oxalobacter formigenes actually stimulates the intestinal epithelium to secrete oxalate that's already in our bodies, which helps reduce our total oxalate load even further. For example, people with Oxalobacter formigenes living in their guts have a 70% lower risk of being a recurring kidney stone former. And studies have shown that consuming oxalate degrading bacteria, for example, taking a probiotic that includes bifido Bacterium infantis or Lactobacillus plantarum, Bifidobacterium animalis or Lactobacillus brevis reduces oxalate levels in the urine, meaning that certain probiotics could really help combat kidney stones and other problems associated with high oxalate levels. Citric acid found in citrus fruits can also reduce the formation of kidney stones by binding with calcium oxalate crystals, which prevents the crystals from growing in size and becoming stones. But it is a myth that drinking large amounts of lemon juice will break up kidney stones once they are formed. And as I already mentioned, getting enough calcium is super important because dietary calcium reduces how much oxalate we absorb in our gastrointestinal tracts, leading to lower oxalate levels in our urine. Okay, so if eating high oxalate foods doesn't cause kidney stones, what does? Certain dietary factors increase risk of developing kidney stones, including high meat intake, high salt intake, low calcium intake, and low intake of fruits and vegetables. But the biggest risk factor is inadequate hydration. Increasing fluid intake, hydrating ourselves better, reduces the risk of kidney stones by increasing urine volume and diluting oxalate levels, in turn helping to prevent stones from forming. In fact, just consuming enough fluids to keep urine flow above one milliliter per kilogram body weight per hour nearly eliminates the risk of oxalate oversaturation in the urine and dramatically reduces risk of kidney stone formation. So if you're prone to kidney stones, drinking enough water on a consistent basis is your best strategy for reducing stone risk, along with getting it enough calcium and adding in some citrus fruits. There's even some indication that drinking up to 50% more fluids than the standard three liters per day for males and 2.2 liters per day for females can be really important for people who get recurring kidney stones. So what about avoiding high oxalate foods like spinach, nuts, beets, rhubarb, tea, chocolate, raspberries, and wheat bran? Not only is there no reason for most people to avoid these foods, but these are some of the most beneficial foods on the planet. I could do an entire video on the studies showing all the different health benefits for each of these. But let's zoom in on spinach here. Because it's one of the highest oxalate foods with up to 900 milligrams of oxalates, per 100 grams of raw fresh spinach. And because there's rumors online that eating too much spinach can cause kidney stones in as little as two weeks. 
For example, a 2002 study done in healthy females looked at how consuming a spinach-enriched diet affected cell DNA resistance to oxidative stress. Subjects consumed 150 grams of spinach. That's about five cups worth every day for three weeks. Spinach intake significantly decreased lymphocyte DNA damage and simultaneously increased serum lutein concentrations by 37%. It's worth noting that no kidney stones and indeed no adverse events of any kind were reported in this study. A 2015 study in young male athletes evaluated the effects of chronic daily spinach consumption on exercise-induced oxidative stress and muscle damage following a half marathon competition. They consumed one gram per kilogram body weight of spinach per day for two weeks before running their half marathons. Total antioxidant capacity was significantly increased in the spinach group, who also had lower markers of oxidative stress and muscle damage following exercise compared to the placebo control. And yeah, none of the study participants developed kidney stones in this study either. All this being said, it is important to note that some people, about one in three million, do have a genetic disorder that causes too much oxalate to be produced by their bodies and other people have absorption disorders that can cause too much oxalate to be absorbed in the gastrointestinal tract. That includes people with Crohn's disease, celiac disease, chronic pancreatitis, and it can be a side effect of bariatric surgery. If this applies to you, talk to your doctor about whether or not a low oxalate diet is appropriate for you, as well as the value of other diet modifications like increasing calcium and hydration. But most people do not need to worry about dietary oxalates or avoid the foods that contain them. And if you're interested, I have a whole chapter in my book dedicated to busting food phobic myths like this one about oxalates. The book is called Nutivore and you can order it from any online bookseller or from your local independent bookstore.